be not burnt too hard. Captain John Barbeau, French slave trader. The white people did not need to be present in the interior of Africa. All they needed to do was to supply the weapons. The people they dealt with were um, those coastal peoples right on the, on, on the coastline who controlled the, the territory down there. So Kwano would not have met, maybe not even heard of white people. I have found no place where I can enlarge my fortune so soon as where I now live. In this manner, we spend the prime of youth among Negroes, scraping the world for money, the universal god of mankind, until death overtakes us. Nicholas Owen, slave trader. Europeans died like flies in that climate. The average expectation was three or four years, you know, really. And so they had to make money while they could because they knew they didn't have much time. So in that sense, of course, they were, they were trapped. They were caught in the web of the system and held there and died there. The Europeans made more than 54,000 voyages to trade in human beings. No one will ever know the exact number of people taken from the shores of West Africa, but more than 11 million have been counted in the records that remain. Most headed for South America and the Caribbean islands, some half a million to the mainland of North America. December 29th, 1724. No trade today, though many traders came on board. They informed us that the people are gone to war within land and will bring prisoners enough in two or three days, in hopes of which we stay. December 30th, 1724. No trade yet. But our traders came on board today and informed us the people had burnt four towns of their enemies so that tomorrow we expect slaves. Liverpool surgeon. Received on this cargo 46 men, 34 women, 14 boys, 6 girls, and 147 chests of corn. The rest of the goods delivered on shore to Cape Coast and Accra to Mr. Harbin. William Dexter, ship's captain. Ship captains were cautioned not to buy all their slaves from one place. Africans who knew each other, who spoke the same language, were more likely to conspire and rebel. There would be maybe 25 seamen and the ship's officers. There might have been a crew of 30. And these 30 had to um, control maybe 300 men, black men and women, who were aware of being abducted and who were, in, who were, who were desperate and who were dangerous because they were obviously waiting to seize any opportunity that was, that was offered to, to rebel and to take over the ship and to kill, to kill the crew, and that, that did happen fairly frequently. The only way that this could be contained was by a system of fear. I was now persuaded that I had got into a world of bad spirits and that they were going to kill me. Their complexions, too, differing so much from ours. Their long hair and the language they spoke, which was very different from any I had ever heard, united to confirm me in this belief. I no longer doubted my fate. I asked 
if we were going to be eaten by those white men with horrible looks, red faces, and long hair. Olauda Equiano. Captains call the voyage from West Africa to the New World, the Middle Passage, the middle leg of a triangular course that began and ended in Europe. From English ports, ships sailed to Africa to trade goods for slaves. Then the human cargo was taken to the Americas and traded for raw materials, which were then carried back to England and sold. The crossing from Africa to the Americas usually took 60 to 90 days, but some voyages took as long as four or even six months. Bad weather and sickness could turn any trip into a nightmare. The cramped quarters of ships being packed in such a way that a slave will be between the legs of another slave and having to lie in the feces. The lack of air, the longer this trip takes, um, the more suffocating. The surgeon, upon going between decks in the morning to examine the situation of the slaves, frequently finds several dead. And sometimes a dead and living Negro fastened by their irons together. When this is the case, they are brought upon the deck. The living Negro is disengaged and the dead one thrown overboard. Alexander Falkenbridge, ship's surgeon. There are no doubt people who went mad. Inability to communicate, decisions having to be made, and this person is suffering as yourself. Does one help? Does one simply try to make it the best that one can alone? Not knowing, where am I being taken? What is my fate? Um, for weeks, months, depending what the point of origin was. One day, two of my weary countrymen who were chained together somehow made it through the nettings and jumped into the sea. Immediately, another quite dejected fellow also followed their example, and I believe many more would have very soon done the same if they had not been prevented by the ship's crew, who were instantly alarmed. Ulauda Equiano. The idea, I think, was that the slave cannot be allowed to die by his own will and intention. He cannot be allowed to die voluntarily. If he's going to die, it must be at the hands of his captors, so that in that case he doesn't, you know, he doesn't spread a dangerous example. Monday, 11th December. By the favor of divine providence, made a timely discovery today that the slaves were forming a plot for insurrection. Surprised two of them attempting to get off their arms, and in their rooms found knives, stones, shot, etc., and a cold chisel. There appeared eight principally concerned in protecting the mischief, and four boys in supplying them with the above instruments. Put the boys in arms, and slightly in the thumbscrews to urge them to a full confession. Captain John Newton. We stood in arms, firing on the revolted slaves, of whom we killed some and wounded many. And many of the most mutinous leapt overboard and drowned themselves in the ocean with much resolution. James Barbo, English sailor, 1701.
Often did I think many of the inhabitants of the deep much happier than myself. Every circumstance I met with served only to render my state more painful and heighten my apprehensions and my opinion of the cruelty of whites. Olaudo, Equiano. The slavers, they knew at one level that these were human beings because they were obviously clearly human beings. At the same time, they were objects of profit. And those two concepts could, couldn't obviously be really reconciled, and they never were reconciled. It was just, I think, that the, 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 the humane, the, the, the sense of the humanity of these people were, it was simply suppressed for the sake of gold. And the shocking thing is that human beings are able indefinitely to suppress the, the urgings of their common humanity and to deny it for the sake of making profits. Is not the slave trade entirely a war with the heart of man? And surely that which is begun by breaking down the barriers of virtue involves in its continuance destruction to every principle and buries all sentiment in ruin. O Lauda Equiano. Africans in America. 